This is Grafton Way, a very ordinary street in central London today, but 200 years ago, if you'd gone through this door, you'd have found yourself in one of the great centres of revolution in Europe. This was the place that Simon Bolivar and José de San Martín came in 1810, the men who were going to go back to liberate South America, where they came to sit at the feet of the man considered to be the precursor of South American independence. Hi there, we're asking people about this statue. Do, do you know who this is? Uh, no, no idea. Uh, no. Never noticed it before. No. No. Oh, blimey. I walk past it nearly every day and I have really? looked at it and I can't remember off the top of my head. I think he's one of the liberators, isn't he? The South American That's, liberators. He is indeed. That's yes. very good. I'm afraid not. No, no we have sorry. no idea. We if I, well, if I tell you it's Francisco de Miranda, does that mean anything? It doesn't mean anything to me. I know I've looked at it and looked at the name, but I'm not sure who. No, it doesn't still mean anything to me. I'm ignorant of this. No, 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 no. Uh, no, not really. I'm not, not from here particularly. particularly. Okay. <laughs> no, I'd say maybe he's Spanish. Good. Well, on the right light, I mean, he is a Spanish speaker. That's absolutely right. Any <gasps> guesses as to why he's here? Why there's a statue of him right here? Trading with the British of some sort. Because he lived here? <laughs> no, sorry. Probably because of the area. Has something happened here? Just down Grafton Way here is his house, still standing, now part of the Venezuelan embassy. Ah, that's why nice. the statue's here. Ah, that's cool. Nice. There you go. Yeah, great. You'd have to be pretty much really into history to know that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay, I guess you would. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, no problem. problem. Thank you. <laughs> Looking down Grafton Way is this statue of the man himself. This is Francisco de Miranda, the precursor of Latin American independence. He was a Venezuelan, born in 1750, left home at the age of uh, 20, joined the Spanish army and fought as part of the Spanish army in the American Revolution. But he then turned against Spain became an advocate of Latin American independence and he spent most of the 40 years he was away from home traveling around Europe trying to build support for the idea of independence meeting the great and the good of Europe at the time Catherine the Great, Frederick the Great, Napoleon, the British Prime Minister William Pitt he fought as a revolutionary general in the French Revolution before finally coming back and settling in Grafton Way in 1802. So what sort of guy was Miranda? Well, he was extremely well read. He was a scholar. He was also very well traveled going all over Europe. And that meant he had lots of news, lots of connections. And that gave him the entree into polite society. People wanted him at their dinner parties. They wanted to put him on display in their salons. He was a true man of the enlightenment. London was a good place for Miranda to settle because Britain was at war with Spain and he could expect a sympathetic hearing for his ideas about Latin American independence. And there were lots of merchant capitalists here as well, interested in getting into that rich South American market. But there was something else. He was a real Anglophile Miranda. It was because Britain had a long tradition of constitutional government, parliamentary government, the kind of thing he wanted to see in his homeland in South America.
This is Simon Bolivar, the greatest of the South American revolutionaries, known as the liberator across the continent today. He left London in 1810 to embark on a campaign that lasted 16 years to liberate the northern part of the continent and create the countries we know today as Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador and Peru. So what was Bolivar doing in London in 1810? He'd come here actually as part of a Venezuelan delegation. The revolution had just broken out and the Venezuelans were keen to get British support. It was in fact the first Latin American delegation to be received at the highest level of government in Europe. They had a meeting with the foreign secretary here. The British had an interest in this because they were hoping to move in to the markets in South America. So they were willing to play host to South American revolutionaries. Of course, the person who was hosting these young revolutionaries was that veteran revolutionary Francisco de Miranda at Grafton Way. And why is he here? And why are many other revolutionaries here? Because London was a place which was quite sympathetic to the idea of revolution. And there was also a very strong radical subculture among the common people of support for political freedom. So London was quite an exciting place to be politically in 1810. Bolivar's not the only revolutionary in Belgrave Square either. There's another statue to another great revolutionary right here as well. Here's the other great South American revolutionary in Belgrave Square, it's José de San Martín. He was here too, meeting Miranda. Not quite sure exactly when, but he missed Bolivar. But he too then returned to South America and he played the major role in the liberation of Argentina and later moved on, taking the campaign into Chile and then on up to Peru the other great liberator of the South American revolutions in the early 19th century. When they met up, Bolivar and San Martin didn't really get on. They were quite different in some ways, similar in that they were both members of this Creole property-owning elite, but Bolivar was a real radical who wanted major changes in the character of South America. He wanted to free the slaves, he was interested in land reform and so on. San Martin a much more conservative figure altogether who wanted to limit the revolution. They weren't really interested in a revolution from below of the common people. It was San Martin's vision that won out and it meant that South America remained a very conservative place through the 19th and into the 20th century. And many of those problems, problems of inequality, problems of underdevelopment, problems of tension between an elite which is basically of Spanish descent and the indigenous population, those problems are very live in South American politics still today. I'm back in Grafton Way by Miranda's house because this is the place that he left in 1810 when he followed Bolivar and San Martin back to South America to play his role in the revolution. And he became the generalissimo and dictator of the first Venezuelan Republic. But it was a short-lived triumph. The royalists won a major military victory and the result was that Miranda tried to cut a deal and uh, invited them into Caracas, 
where they carried out a massacre and Bolivar was outraged that Miranda had been so naive and handed him over to the Spanish and he ended his life in a Spanish prison in 1816. This was really the contrast between an old revolutionary, Miranda was 60 by the time he went back to Venezuela, an old revolutionary who was really a man of the 18th century and had this idea of a kind of polite revolution without bloodshed. Whereas Bolivar understood that to make revolution, you needed to be prepared to wage what he called war to the death. <laughs>